G'day everybody, John from Springer Solar here. Today we just want to do a really quick video on the Victron Smart Shunt, uh, how to quickly wire them up properly and also how to program them. Very popular item that we sell at Springer Solar and the programming particularly is something that troubles a lot of people. So we just want to do a really quick video just to show you the basics of how to set it up and to program it properly. We're not going to go into too much depth in today's video, so there are a lot of other settings in the Smart Shunt that you can go into that we're not going to discuss today. We're just going to go through the main ones that will get this Smart Shunt set up, ready to go, ready to use. Okay, so what we've done, we've just done a really simple setup, just so it's nice and clear and easy for people to understand how to wire the Smart Shunt. Uh, same goes for all the Victron battery monitors as well. They're basically wired the same way. We have literally really simple is you just have one cable connected to your negative terminal on your battery. And that cable goes to the battery minus side of your smart shunt. Everything else needs to go to the system minus terminal on the shunt. So easy way to tell you've got it right is you've only got one cable on your negative of your battery. You can have multiple cables on the other side of the shunt, that's fine, but everything has to flow through the shunt to get to and from the battery. So all your charges, all your loads need to be connected to this side of your smart shunt. All right, so really simple. Then all you have is a little positive cable so that it obviously powers up the smart shunt and gives it the voltage reading. So we've just done a really simple setup where we've just got the smart shunt and we're just connecting it through to a solar regulator, solar panel on the roof, solar regulator, and we're just charging a battery. We don't have any load connected to the system. That is a really simple setup and really critical that you only have the one cable going from your battery to the smart shunt and then everything else needs to be on the other side of the smart shunt and you're going to be pretty right to go from there. Okay, so we've we've wired the system up. Now we need to program it. Okay, so obviously the first thing you need to do though is download the Victron Connect app to your phone. Okay, so you just get that from your App Store or Google Play, whichever phone you've got. Once you've got that on your phone, you just simply open the app and this product should come as a, as a product that's on your main screen. You simply press on that product. It will ask for a pin number. Now that pin number is located on the side of the product. You simply enter that pin number into your phone. And so now we can get into the programming of the shunt. All right, so as you can see here, we've gone into the smart shunt and we have the main screen, obviously showing state of charge at 100%, which is actually not accurate at the moment because we haven't programmed it yet. But you can see it's giving us the voltage, how much current's going into the battery, how much power is going into the battery. Consumed amp hours are zero because we're not consuming anything at this time. Um, but to program it, what we do is we just go up to the top right hand corner of the screen. You see that little cog, you just press on that and that opens up the settings page. So you can see there little information that says the first use setup and saying that you need to configure the below settings before you can use the unit, okay? So first one we'll do, we'll go into the battery capacity and we'll set that. So just click on the little set button. Now it's obviously coming up with 200 amp hours as standard. And luckily enough for us, that is exactly what we are charging. So that's okay for us. Make sure you set that to whatever your battery bank size is. So the total size of your battery bank. If you've got three 200 amp hour batteries, well then you've got a 600 amp hour battery bank. So you need to make sure you set it to 600 amp hours. All right, but we're gonna leave ours as 200 because that's exactly what we've got. And so we just press the OK button. Auxiliary input, we hit set. And now we don't have an auxiliary input on this setup. This is just monitoring the deep cycle battery that we got here. If you do want to monitor the voltage of another battery, that's where you'd go in and do it here, but we don't have any of that, so we're just gonna go okay. Now, once those two things have done, we can get in and actually program the main settings of the unit. So if we just click on the battery setting, so you can see we've already done the battery capacity at 200 amp hours. Now, the charge voltage, this is the voltage at which 
the shunt recognizes that the battery is fully charged. Once it hits this voltage for a certain amount of time, it will recognize that the battery is full. Now, we're charging it with a Victron charger. It's a lithium battery. So Victron lithium chargers are set to 14.2 volts, their absorption voltage. We recommend that you set your charge voltage to 0.2 of a volt below what your absorption voltage is. So in our case, we've got an absorption voltage of 14.2 volts. So we would set the charge voltage to 14 volts. All right, so you just click on the voltage, punch in 14, done. Okay, so our charge voltage is now 14 volts. So again, 0.2 of a volt below whatever your absorption voltage is for your charger that you're using. All right, next one we come to is discharge floor. At the moment, it's set to 50%. So discharge floor is what helps the monitor work out how long you've got to go before the battery hits its discharge floor. So if you set it to 50%, you're telling the shunt that you don't really want to use any more than 50% of the battery. With lithium, we would set that down to about sort of 10%. Okay, because you can use a lot more of your lithium than you can with an AGM. If you had an AGM, you'd leave it at 50%. So that's sort of the area you don't really want to go below the discharge floor if you can. You are allowed to, but it's just a good figure to show you, all right, I don't really want to go down below 10%. Now, the tail current. This is another part of how the unit works out if it's fully charged. All right, so we've set the 14 volt limit as it hits 14 volts, it's fully charged, but also the current has to drop below a certain percentage to activate 100% full. So you've got the 14 volts and you've got the tail current. Now the tail current in this case is 4% of the battery capacity. Now we recommend setting this to 1% for, for a lithium battery. So we change that to 1%. So that's saying on a 200 amp hour battery, 1% of that is two amp hours. So once it, the charger drops below two amp hours and it's hitting 14 volts, then it knows it's fully charged. And also the charge detection time is the next one that we look at as well. So we've got the 14 volts, we've got the two amps that has dropped below, and it has to do this for three minutes in the charge detection time. So if it meet, reaches those two parameters for three minutes, it will automatically say the battery's at 100%. So we'll leave that at three minutes, that's fine. So per good exponent, uh, 1.25 is what it comes to standard, which is fine for AGM uh, lead acid type batteries. If you're using a lithium battery, it's recommended to set to 1.1%, okay? Yeah, Pigot's exponent has got to do with the way the battery deteriorates over time and things like that. So lithium are much better than an AGM, so you set it a little bit lower. So 1.1 for that. Next one we come to is your charge efficiency factor. 95% is what we recommend for lithium batteries, so that one's fine. You can go up to 99% as well. Victron do recommend setting at 99%, so anywhere from 95 to 99% is going to be pretty accurate, but we say 95% and it works well so we're just going to stick with 95 percent now really that is it done that is the main settings you need to put into this smart shunt to get it to work properly at the moment the battery hasn't reached full we're still charging the battery so it's not gonna calibrate itself to 100 percent full until it reaches those parameters a lot of people recommend that you charge the battery to 100% full before you do this, which is a good idea. Definitely not a bad idea, but if you don't, as soon as it gets to 100% full, it is gonna calibrate itself. So it's not gonna be accurate until it heats 100% full, if you didn't start at 100% full. There's a lot of alarms and relays and things like that that you can set, but we're not, like I said, not going to go into it. This will keep the battery shunt working correctly and being accurate. And just remember that even if it does get out of whack a little bit, it will automatically recalibrate itself every time that battery gets to 100% full. So don't stress if it does get out of whack a little bit from time to time. As long as you've programmed it right, it will know what 100% is and will recalibrate itself to 100%. Okay, so there you have it. Just a very quick rundown of setting up your Victron Smart Shunt or Victron Battery Monitor. 
an essential part of any off-grid system or any automotive system. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't have to hesitate to ask any of our staff at Springers. Um, thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next video.